this shouldn't take longer than 20 minutes. And then you can spend the rest of your quote unquote class time finishing up the homework, which is technically, I think, what is it, due tonight, technically at midnight, and we'll check it tomorrow in tomorrow's video. All right, so just a refresher. For one thing, um, since this is the version I'm recording, I'll, I'll act like I'm addressing potentially everyone. Um, uh, if you haven't heard, the entire school is on quarantine now, so it's not just a handful of classes, it's everyone. We'll all be back on May 3rd. Um, let's see. But for me, that is really only five classes of streams. So I'm streaming today. I'll stream tomorrow, checking homework with you guys. On Friday, I'm just gonna send out a Google Forms translation quiz. And so it's very important y'all all show up or watch the video tomorrow because I'll be talking about exactly what the quiz is gonna be like. I'll try to make it as easy as possible um, by, by talking about it and giving details on it in class on Thursday. Anyway, so you know, two this week, nothing on Friday. You take that Google Forms quiz and you can start your long weekend because we don't have school on Monday. And then we'll come back and I'll do streams Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, probably with a homework due on that Thursday. So next week, it's kind of like three streams since there's no Monday and that Friday will probably be a chapter 18 vocab quiz. And then it'll be May and we'll come back. This week will be crazy because I think there's like leftover CMAS stuff they're going to try to cram in. And then we'll basically have two normal weeks right here. Um, actually, like one. We'll have one normal week to finish chapter 18, which is quite a tricky chapter so it's actually a great place to, to kind of stop uh, and then we'll have review week and then we'll have finals week and that's summer guys so hang in there um, depending on your your feelings on on quarantine you're either mad about this or maybe you have mixed feelings like me I have mixed feelings it's kind of weird but um what are you gonna do most of the classes were quarantined until next week anyway um all right we're still practicing quick quite quad this relative clause yeah, David, if your mic's on, you can, yeah, anybody can just interrupt me. Do you have a specific question? The whole school's quarantined until the until like the first or third of May. Yeah, I think that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, May 3rd. We're all coming back on May 3rd. Um, yeah, I think some ninth and 10th graders are going to go in next week just for their PSAT on Tuesday and Wednesday, but obviously y'all don't have to worry about that. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, maybe I said something that sounded contradictory, but whole school got quarantined yesterday. Uh, so they were able to finish up, um, one classes CMAS, if you're talking upper school at least. So there's that. But anyway, guys, let's do five sentences and then I'll let you go. These are exercitationes and sententiae antiquae from chapter 17, so it's in the textbook if you happen to want to follow along. But right now, I would focus on writing down the glossed words that, uh, what is that, um, Golem is supplying uh, to stay on top of your vocab. And uh, trying to follow along with the relative clauses and making sure you're understanding how those work. So multi auditores, those two words, they're ending uh, in different looking ways, but they're actually, or they can be the same case Anybody, what case or function would multi auditories probably be? No, it's okay. That was worth a shot. Uh, probably just the subject, probably nominative plural. Like the long I on multi, it could be two different things. It could be genitive singular or nominative plural. Uh, it'd be kind of weird to me to have an adjective as the first word and it's like possessive of something, unless it's like it's right next to another possessive noun. Um, so it's either that genitive singular or nominative plural that long i and then the es on auditores that's either nominative plural or accusative plural third declension but the two things they can both be are nominative plural so it's probably the subject many listeners okay and then i see sateros acres and my direct object spidey sense starts tingling that sure looks like a direct object to me uh even though the as and the es endings are different as I already said, ES could be plural subject or direct object. So on auditories, it's probably plural subject. On acres, it's probably direct object, go or accusative rather, going with sateros, the AS being accusative plural as well. And then tomeibont. Uh, anybody, what tense is tomeibont? I think I saw three or four of you. I feel like that's enough for me to actually ask questions and, and maybe someone could respond, but maybe not. 
it's imperfect, right? We should all be very confident with that B-A ending, meaning imperfect tense. So many listeners feared or were fearing the, the fierce satires. So Aker is glossed down there. It's like sharp, keen, or fierce. But I think only fierce really works here. Um, it kind of rhymes with feared. You could also, you could take Tomeo as like, uh, they were afraid. Many listeners were afraid of the fear satires. But it's up to you. There's different options there. And then the next word I see is quas. And immediately I think, okay, it's one of those sentences where the first half of it was all a main clause, a pretty simple one, right? Like if you're just looking at this part of it, pretty easy. And then the second half of it is an equally easy relative clause. So the last three words are this relative clause, quas poeta. Rikitabat. Quas is actually accusative. It's going to be which or whom? Many listeners fear the fierce satires, which or whom? If it was whom, I guess it would mean that the antecedent was the listeners. Like we're going to talk more about the listeners in the relative clause. But if it's which, its antecedent would be the satires. And if you don't know, satire is just a kind of fancy word for comedy. Basically, it's a comedy that specifically is like criticizing something about society maybe but anyway i think which i think we're going to learn more about the the satire so many listeners fear the fear satires which the poet because poet there is just nominative so he's the subject of the clause recited okay recited is also imperfect so you could say was reciting or just recited and now i've underlined the relative clause okay just so y'all can tell it starts with quas or you know a form of quick quite clause ends with a verb and yeah, which the poet was reciting slash recited. So I'm using this like off red orange pink color for imperfect helping verbs and endings. Any questions, comments, concerns? Let's do four more. Um, so quas was the relative pronoun of the relative clause. Uh, it, it turns out it's accusative. So it's actually the direct object of the clause. If you kind of turn it, this into a question, it'd be like the poet recites um which like which um as a question but it, it there you can kind of hear more that it's a direct object but it's referring to the antecedent um the fear satires which is the direct object the main clause so though actually the relative clause is agreeing it has the same case as its antecedent and that's not always the case no pun intended they always agree in gender and number but they don't actually always agree in case these relative clauses or relative pronouns and their antecedents. Salwe bona amica cui filium meum eri comisi. Okay, these first three words and the commas uh, are making me think this is kind of dialogue. So bone might actually throw you off, but that's just from bonus a um, good. And it has a vocative ending because this is like, hello, good friend. Um, and yeah, if you remember second inclusion US ending nouns, the US turns into an E in the vocative. It's literally the only vocative that isn't identical to its nominative. So that's why bone and amica have an E. Uh, and then I see the verb at the end, okay, comisi from commito, commitera, comisi. Means to entrust or to commit, go figure. And I can tell that this is not just coming from the third principle part, but it's literally the third principle part. So what does that mean? It's perfect tense, not imperfect. It's not like committee bot or committee bomb. So it's perfect tense. So have entrusted or just entrusted. And what's the person in number? If it's ending with a long I, look in the lower left corner. This is a Vinny Vidi Vici style word where it's it's first singular. It's I entrusted, right? Um, so don't forget that. If the verb is identical to the third principle part, not only is it perfect, but it's first person singular. So hello, good friend. I entrusted, well, how about we start with cooey? Um, cooey is our relative pronoun that is in the dative case. And so it's not just going to be whom or which. It'll usually be to whom. Uh, it could be for whom, but to is a little more common. So hello, good friend. To whom maybe have I entrusted my son yesterday? Um, yeah, that'd be a weird way to talk. Like, imagine if you have someone babysit your kid and then the next day you say to them and say, hello, good friend to whom I have sent my son yesterday. Like, what? Uh, but that is the sentence. I used the wrong blue for my data, but that's okay. Let me fix it right now. Uh, 
guys are awfully quiet in there, but that's cool. That's cool. I think the 12 o'clock class will probably be the loudest 1.5. Um, let's see. And keep that in mind, guys. Um, if you're in, you know, 8B, you should you should come to this class. But if, if, if something came up, um, this class also happens at first period and fifth fifth period. So at 12 o'clock and 740, it's essentially the same class. So if you wanted to knock out Latin early one day or if something happened in the morning and you had to come late, um, just for the record. Okay, this one's not bad. Um, fortune is our subject. I see AM and I always see AM and think that you guys probably still don't feel comfortable with AM. AM is him, AM, E A, AM is her. Anyway, it's accusative. So, what would our verb be? It's like fortune, and then I see uh, it's not just AM, it's AM. Stoltem. Stoltem means foolish, but it's Fakio Fakara. And let's go ahead and gloss that. Why not? Because um, that's a verb I feel like people don't feel confident about to make usually sometimes it's just do so it's sort of similar to ago agra but it's less uh crazy ago agra is like act or do or past spend lead um what else there's another crazy one uh pass spend lead those are the main ones anyway fakio is not as bad as ago like it can't be ago can be like 20 things fakio can be like four or five all right but fortune made him foolish see that so it, it, it Usually, um, an adjective kind of functions differently, but uh, it, you'd probably call it like an object complement. It made the direct object an object complement, adjective, foolish. We haven't talked about object complement, so don't worry about that. But um, yeah, that's kind of a, it's, a it's, it's straightforward, and yet it's kind of unique, that, that kind of a sentence structure. Um, which, because then I see Quinn, and so would it be fortune made him foolish who or which? If it was which, I guess that would mean that we're going to talk about the fortune, but I think it's going to be who, meaning we're going to talk more about whoever this him is who is made more foolish by fortune. So fortune made him foolish whom, um, and this sentence is weird. Nimia means like too much, so that's something we should really gloss. Uh, let's see. I have Saipe here. What is this from? Uh, too, too much, excessively. Remember, guys? The way to play at home is basically just to write all the vocab words as we go through them. Because I, I know you guys don't know all these. I don't know all the Latin words. So how would you all know? Um, but, uh, yeah, what's weird here is that we have a drop subject inside of a relative clause. Because quim is actually accusative. That is a direct object of the relative clause. It's masculine. Um, that's why we need to translate as whom instead of who. Really only qui qui quad would ever mean who. Whereas cui is quorum is whose and all the rest, cui, quim, quam, quad, quos, quas, quo, and qua would be whom. But anyway, um, uh, whom she or uh, she loves too much. And so just to, like, this is a clunky sounding sentence, but to clarify, they're actually talking about for, like capital F fortune, as in the Greek god physical embodiment of fortune. This might be similar to the goddess Nike. I'm not totally sure. But they're saying, like, um, whoever fortune shines on too much, that person becomes foolish because they're, like, they're too lucky. So they get a warped sense of reality, I guess, is the sense. But it's not – it's a kind of weird sentence. But, uh, yeah, I just want you to know the she is coming from just the fact that the verb in the relative clause is third, singular, and there's nothing else that can be the subject. So it's just got to be the she that showed up in the uh, main clause. So the quim is the, um, I'm about to move on. I know I've been on this forever, but just one last thing. I should do this to all of the sentences with uh, these clauses. So here we had a relative pronoun. It was actually an, an indirect object and its antecedent was the good friend, I suppose. Like, hello, good friend to whom, blah, 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 blah. So Amico was the antecedent, the wrong sign. And then in this one, um, quim is the antecedent. It's referring to this him who was made foolish. And it, ooh, I'm sorry, I got this one flipped. And they are both direct objects. Just like number one, they're actually agreeing in case, which is kind of rare. But then the reason I thought of that is because because uh, the she, it's, it's referring back to fortune. Anyway, I'm just overcomplicating things at that point. 
Let's do two more guys. And then again, let me screenshot the people who actually showed up so I can throw some bonus your way. Non solum fortuna ipsa as caica set etium eos caicos pocket quos simper adiu wat. Uh, so I want you to like as, as soon as you see non solum to know that this is a specific construction and not even have to get to that set etium, but it is in fact very specific. This kind of setup, and this would be not only dot dot dot, but also dot dot dot. So it's one of those kinds of things. So not not only fortune itself is blind, but also blah 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 blah. blah. It's going to keep going, but. Um, what I just said, it was like, it, it was perfectly left to right, but it was slightly awkward. So instead of just saying not only fortune itself is blind, how about we say not only is fortune itself blind, but also, okay, so again, not only is, like I'm getting the verb first, fortune itself, ipsa is this intensive verb, intensifying fortune, blind, kaika, uh, but also um, it, because fortune looks like it's going to stay the subject. Because if anything, I see aos kaikos and immediately know that must be an accusative. Those are masculine accusative endings. Uh, aos means them. Um, anyway, and then we have pocket again. So that showed up in, uh, you know, since just a second ago. And it's going to be makes again, I think. It makes aos them blind. So we keep making direct objects adjectives, if that makes sense. Um, all right, uh, and then quos happens, and oh, that must be a relative clause. So not only is fortune itself blind, but also it makes them blind who, or whom, or which. Think it'd be whom, as in we're gonna learn more about. So this is really just like a bigger version of this sentence, weirdly. But anyway, um, uh, whom, it would be whom because this is accusative masculine. It's not qui, qui, or quad, so it won't just be who. But anyway, whom, uh, she, because again, we're talking about fortune. I don't know why fortune is like this capital F embodiment of fortune in both of these sentences, but uh, here you go. Um, oh, look, I need my is. Not only is fortune is so fun. Okay. Uh, and then, um, Simpair is easy, but I think a lot of people don't know adi uo, adi uare. So I'd write that in your notes. It means to help. And sometimes it has add as a prefix, and sometimes it doesn't, but it means the same thing. And that reminds me of how remineo sometimes looks like that with the re first syllable, and it looks like remain, but sometimes it's just maneo, and people forget what it means because of that. Last one, real quick bis is a word for twice. So this would just be, you know, I don't see any nominatives, but I, I immediately see dot, and bis is like an adverb. So it would just be like he or she gives twice, who. I guess we're going to start a little baby relative clause, who quickly, Kito's quickly, gives. And that's all it is. That might sound weird, but it's, it kind of makes sense, right? The person saying, um, a person who, who gives like very quickly and willingly, it seems more generous, I guess, than someone who takes a long time to give people gifts. Any questions, guys? Any comments, concerns? Uh, Let's see, Jasmine, glad you can make it. You're off the hook for fifth period. You don't need to show up to that. Um, and I will upload this recording if any of your friends ask about the meeting. Tell them they should have come to the live version, but that I will upload it now. But anyway, guys, let me think. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, again, tomorrow is an extra important stream because I'll go over the homework and I'll spell out exactly what's on the quiz on Friday. Um, it's going to be like two of the homework sentences and then a spot translation that's probably just like um, it's uh, an A for effort kind of thing where I just want to see how y'all do with it and I won't uh, grade it harshly. But yeah, and that's what you'll do Friday morning and then you'll have a long weekend. Uh, hit me up on Teams if you have any questions. The assignment should be good to go. I just double checked. And yeah, I will see you guys later.